We lift your name higher and higher above all else because you deserve, you alone deserve the highest praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Clap and show me the Lord. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Each of our four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Even under its wings, day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Day and night, they never stop saying, they never stop proclaiming the holiness of God. Once again, let us stand up and we will sing about the holiness. We will proclaim about the holiness of the Lord along with the elders, along with the angels in heaven. We will also never stop praising and never stop proclaiming about the holiness of God. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name Stands above them all All thrones All thrones And dominions All powers And positions And your name Stands above them all Say it again Your name is the highest Your name Is the highest Your name Is the greatest Your name Stands above them all, all thrones, and all thrones, and dominions, and all powers, and positions, and your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, O creation, Christ, oh.
God, we want to say thank you so much, Lord, for this day, for this opportunity yes, that we can come together, Lord God, as your children to listen from your word. And Lord God, I pray that, Lord God, your word will come true, Lord God, as life-giving, life-transforming, Lord God. It will change us, Lord God. I pray the Lord God, as we glorify and magnify your name, Lord God. Lord, your power will be manifested in our life, Lord God, Jesus. You are holy, holy God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated at this place. First of all, I would like to thank God for this wonderful opportunity that I can come before all of us here to share from the Word of God. I thank the leadership that has given me the opportunity to share the Word of God today. And I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to this English service in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text today is taken from Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. I'll read it again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. I want all of us to stand with me right now and we'll say this declaration together. As you hold your Bible in your hand, I want you to repeat this declaration after me. Can you all stand together? See, this is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am safe. I am healed. I am delivered. I am redeemed. I am blessed. I am victorious. I am prosperous. Triumphant. I am a minister of God. A servant of Christ. And a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. Believe his word and live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Today we are going to look into the statement why Paul says that he is not ashamed of the gospel. And also understand about the power of God that brings salvation to the people. First of all, let me ask all of us this question. What are the things that we are ashamed of in our life? What are the things that we are ashamed of in our life? Maybe there are things that we are ashamed of. That we have, the things that we have done in the past. Maybe there are many wrong choices that we have made and we don't want to talk about it anymore. Maybe there are things that you are ashamed of. Maybe it is the job that you have. Maybe you are ashamed of the salary that you are getting. Or maybe you are ashamed of your family background. Your parents are no longer together. You are ashamed of many things. And some of us maybe, on a lighter note, we are ashamed of the football club that we are supporting. And definitely we, are, we don't want to talk about all these things. There are things in our life that we are ashamed of. So also we should ask ourselves this question. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Are we ashamed that people will know or will notice us that we are born again Christians. If not, then when was the last time that we shared the gospel to an unbeliever? 
Some of us, in some time or the other, God has given us the opportunity. God has opened doors to share the gospel to our co-workers, to share the gospel to our classmates, to our friends, to our unsafe family members, to a, maybe a taxi driver, or maybe a shopkeeper from where you're buying milk each and every day. Maybe God has opened a door, but all you have done is you have kept your mouth shut. Every day we need to remind ourselves that we as Christians who are saved by grace, filled with the Spirit of God, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. Amen? Paul wrote this letter to the Romans when he was in Corinth. And most probably, he must have addressed the Jewish community in Corinth. That he is not ashamed of the gospel. Because most of the Jews were ashamed of the gospel. Jesus, who was a Jew himself, brought this good news. He brought this gospel to the world. The Jews did not believe in Jesus that he was the prophesied Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. This is what the prophet Isaiah prophesied. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. So to a Jew or to a Jewish community, that is what they thought the Messiah will be or that is what they thought that is how the Messiah will come. Where he will rule over the government. The government will be upon the shoulder of the Messiah. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. That is the picture they have. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And a prince. A prince of peace. So this is the picture that the Jewish people have about the Messiah or about Jesus. And in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, it says, Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler of Israel. So this is the picture, like I said, the Jewish people have about the Messiah. One who is mightily strong. One where the government will be upon his shoulders. Whatever his, he says, the government will obey. One who is a prince, a prince of peace. So Jesus was not what the Jews expected. And there's a quote that I wrote. With great expectation come great depression. When the expectation is not met. So most of the Jews were sad, were depressed. This is not the Messiah that we want. They all thought he'll come as a king. They all thought he'll, he'll come as a ruler, a prince, who would kick out this Roman Empire. But on the contrary, Jesus was born in the poorest of the poor family. Jesus was not a king, but a carpenter. And the saddest thing of all was that Jesus was crucified. He was killed by the Roman Empire. And crucifixion at the time was considered the lowest form of execution. Crucifixion was considered as the lowest form of execution. And it was administered only to those criminals. So it was difficult for the Jews to boast on this gospel of Christ. They were ashamed of the gospel of Christ. How can they take this gospel to the world? How can they take this gospel to the Roman Empire? The Jews may have forgotten that Jesus did something which no man could and which no man will ever be able to do. And that is Jesus rose from the grave. Amen? He conquered death. To prove that he is God, Jesus rose again from the dead. Paul is not ashamed of the gospel because of the experience he had with Jesus. 
Paul had this experience with Jesus. That is why he boldly say, he boldly proclaimed, I am not ashamed of the gospel. When all of us, after this service, we go out from this church building, I want all of us to have the spirit that we will all say, like uh, all proclaim, like Paul proclaimed, that we or I am not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Paul is not ashamed of the gospel because of the experience he had with Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8, Paul said, And last of all, he, that means Jesus, and last of all, he appeared to me. Paul had an encounter with Jesus. Even on his way to Damascus, he had an encounter with Jesus. So if we are ashamed of the gospel, if we are ashamed to share the gospel to our friends, to our unsafe family members, we should ask ourselves this question. Do we really have that experience with Christ? Have we really had that experience of Christ? Have we really had that an encounter with Jesus Christ? Have we really experienced his saving grace? Have we really experienced his love? Have we really experienced his mercy? Have we really experienced his forgiveness of our sins? When we say yes, we have experienced all the goodness of God, we will surely proclaim like Paul proclaimed, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. We need that experience. All of us here, the Bible says, we are sinners. But while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let us all have that experience today that Christ, we should have an understanding that Christ died for our sins so that we one day, our main sole purpose, our main purpose of our life is that we one day will be together with Jesus Christ in heaven. Amen. Paul had confidence in his message because his message has come from God. Paul also has this confidence in the gospel of Jesus Christ because he, knew, he knows that this message, this gospel that he's preaching, it doesn't come from any source, but it comes from the life giver himself, from the creator himself, that is God. In Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul writes, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. You see, Paul understood that this gospel that he's preaching, it is not anybody news or anybody saying. It is the gospel of God. You know, in life, sometimes we are more enthusiastic or we are sometimes we love to spread fake news, especially in this world of social media where fake news is in abundance. Every time we receive forwarded message from our friends or family members, and there was a time when I received a message in my phone, and it says that on this day, on this particular date, and at that particular time, there will be an earthquake. Maybe some of you remember, or maybe some of you has received that, that kind of messages. Where this, on this particular date, at the particular time, there will be an earthquake. And this source was confirmed by NASA. And some people on hearing this would forward to many contacts. But then when you read the message carefully, even the spelling of earthquake is E-A-R-T-H. Q-U-A-C-K, earthquake. And when you think about it, what has NASA got to do with the study of earthquake? But then people would forward these messages. So let us not be ashamed of the gospel, my friend. Amen. This message of the gospel, it comes from the Father himself. The good news comes from our Creator himself. Let us not be ashamed to spread the word of God, to forward Biblical messages to our friends, to our unsafe 
family members, to our contact list. Let us spread the gospel. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel. Let us tell our friends and unsafe friends about Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. And now let us see about what the power of God indicates here. In the Greek word, power means dunamis. It is the root word of our English dynamite. However, dunamis is not just any power. The word often refers to miraculous power. So the power of the gospel, it has this miraculous power to do what? Like casting out demons. It changes life. It changes the life of, a, of, the, of the people. It gives repentance, healing of the body, and most importantly, healing of the soul. This is the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. It changes the life of people. A sinner will not sin anymore because of the gospel. A person who is sick receives healing when he hears the gospel. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the gospel of God. Last year, here in the church, I witnessed the power of the gospel of God. Where I could see two different tribes, the Meitei and the Cookies, were having lunch together. Oh, how beautiful it is. That is the power of the gospel of God. Amen. When the lion and the lamb sits together, when a brother from different denomination, a brother from different tribe, different culture, come together in one name that is the name of Jesus Christ. Even though when there's many things happening around them, but when they come together, that is the power of the gospel. This power of the gospel has the potential to create and destroy. As we know, what does a dynamite do? A dynamite can destroy this whole building. But it does not only destroy it, and it also creates. What does it create? It creates space. It can create a big hollow. You know, there's a big hole. So also the Bible, what does the gospel brings. It brings about changes in a sinner's life. It gives hope to the hopeless. It brings healing to the body and also to the soul. And what does the gospel destroy? The gospel destroys the work of the devil in our life. Amen. That is the power of the gospel. That is why we should not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God in delivering salvation to mankind. It has that power, that dynamite power to create a change in somebody's life. Maybe right now you're having, you have a friend, a family member where by all human works, all human understanding, you have given up hope. You'll say, I cannot change him anymore. I cannot change her anymore. Maybe you have taken him to different counselors, counseling after counseling, therapy after therapy, he's still the same. Rehab after rehab, he's still the same. There is this hope that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The power of the gospel will change everything in a person's life. I've seen many people where the gospel has transformed drastically, that's transformed the life of, of a person. Before, he's a drunkard, an alcoholic, a nuisance in the society. But once he meets Christ, once he accepts the gospel of Christ in his heart, he is a new person. He is a new person. A new chapter begins in his life. That is the power and the work of the gospel. The 12th apostle, 
they also, they were not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because they, were, they have walked hand in hand with their Savior, Jesus Christ. They have seen with their own naked eyes the power of the gospel. That is why they would do anything to spread this good news to the nook and corners of the world. The 12 apostles understood this assignment from God. When God says, go around the world, preach the gospel, they understood this assignment. And literally, they would do whatever it takes to spread the gospel. And we could see through their life what happened to them. Peter was crucified upset, upside down. Andrew was crucified. James, he was stoned to death. John, what happened to Apostle John? He was boiled in oil. Can you imagine? Boiled in hot boiling oil. Matthew was speared to death. Philip was crucified. And Apostle Thomas, who came to India, he was speared to death. These men would gladly give their life away for the sake of the gospel because they knew that their life here on earth is just a temporary assignment. Their life is in heaven. Amen? They were not ashamed. They are not ashamed of preaching. They are not ashamed of spreading the gospel because it has the power to transform life. And it has the power to break those chains of the evil one. These men, they have nothing to lose. To a man, there is a quote by Mark Twain, he says, To a man who has a hammer in his hand, everything he sees is like a nail. To a man who has a hammer in his hand, everything he sees is like a nail. My brothers and sisters, you have the gospel in your hand. You have this power, this dunamis in your hand. And in conclusion, I would like to conclude with a story. This is a story of a man called Telemachus. Telemachus was a very prayerful man. And one day, while he was praying, he heard the voice of God saying to him, go to Rome. And Telemachus knew that he couldn't say no to God's voice. So he went to Rome and he saw throngs of people lining up, entering this huge stadium, which we know it's called the Colosseum. And here, Telemachus saw the gladiators come forward, stand before the emperor and say, We who are about to die salute you. Telemachus, on knowing that these men are going to fight to the dead, cried out, In the name of Christ, stop this. In the name of Christ, stop this. His voice wasn't heard among the crowd. And eventually, Telemachus climbed up the wall, made his way to the crowd, and into the floor of the main arena. And the crowd saw this little figure over and over again, crying and shouting, trying to stop the gladiators from killing themselves. Telemachus was crying, in the name of Christ, stop this. In the name of Christ, stop this. Some were amused and some were angry. And at that moment, a gladiator came and stabbed him to death. A gladiator pushed a sword to his body and Telemachus fell to the ground. And his last words that came out from the mouth of Telemachus was, in the name of Christ, stop this. And an amazing thing happened. 
the gladiator stood, stood looking at this tiny human lying on the floor and there was silence in the Colosseum. One by one, they made their way to the exit and left the place. And you know what happened? And that was the last battle to the death that the gladiators, that the gladiators fought in the Colosseum. Amen? That was the last ever battle that the gladiators fought in the Colosseum. And all this thing happened, why? Because a man shared the message, shared the gospel of life instead of death. Shared the gospel of love instead of hatred. Shared the gospel of freedom in the midst of bondage. And that is how we could see there was a change in that city. The city of Rome was never the same again. There was no longer the fight to the death between the gladiators. All this because of this one person who was not ashamed to share the gospel. His name is Delimachus. So my friends, my brothers and sisters, this is an encouragement to me. This is an encouragement to all of us. Let us not be ashamed to share the gospel. Once again, I'll read from where I started. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. Let us not be ashamed of this gospel. Like I said, when we go out from this place, have the spirit in us where we would share maybe Today, we would share the gospel to somebody. You never know how the gospel will impact. It is the Holy Spirit's work that will change that person's life. All we have to do is share the love of Christ to someone today. And at this time, before I hand over this microphone to a dear pastor here, let us make a commitment where we say, Lord, maybe there are times where I've stepped back Maybe there are times where I keep my mouth shut. But Lord, give me the power. Lord, open my mouth. Lord, I want to make a commitment where I will never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Can we do that? Can we all stand and pray? Father, Lord God, today we come before you, Lord God. We want to say thank you so much for your word. And Lord God, this word has come to me first. And Lord God, I pray that Lord God, just like Paul proclaimed, Lord God, that he is not ashamed of the gospel, Lord, because it is the power of God for the salvation of many. Lord, we want to see many people saved, Lord by God, by this gospel. Lord, we want to see, Lord God, Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to see, we want to see, Lord God, broken hearts healed, Lord God. We want to see, Lord God, sinners accepting you, Lord God. Lord, help us, Lord God to be that channel, Lord God, of blessing to others, Lord. Lord, because we are safe, we want to see others also safe, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that, Lord God, we will not be ashamed of the gospel, but we will, be, we, we will boldly proclaim of what you have done, Lord. Lord God, as children of Christ, Lord, you have given us everything that we need, Lord God. Lord, help us, Lord God, to be bold, Help us, Lord God, to be strong, to stand firm in the faith that we have, Lord God. To share this gospel to the world, Lord Jesus. Lord God, forgive us, Lord. Maybe there are times when we have stepped back, Lord God. But Lord, today, Lord God, we make a commitment where we will say, Lord God, we will share the gospel wherever we are. Wherever we are, Lord God. In whatever place, whatever time, Lord God, we will share the gospel, Lord God, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. At this time, I give this microphone to Pastor Danny. Thank you, Deacon Peniel. May I add another story? It's a true incident that happened when we were just 
have accepted Jesus Christ in our lives, we went to this camp. In the camp, there is a Bible verse that we have to memorize for daily devotion. And the verse is Romans 1.16, for we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, for it is the power of God. When we were memorizing it, in the midst of the campus, there is a particular girl. We did not know about her, but it seems that she was demon, demonized or she was demon possessed, oppressed, I would say. When we were reading that, when we were memorizing the verse, she was memorizing it, she was saying it, and she said like this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, which is not the power of God, not the power of God. And we were all, we were all uh, astonished what she is saying, just opposite of the word of God. Then we were trying to correct her. Her whole countenance changed. It seems that the evil spirit inside of her was telling it is not the power of God, not the power of God. Then we knew, we knew, we are not dealing with just mere words, but we are dealing with a spirit here. So thank you, brother. Thank you, Peniel. Really, these, these words, they are power in themselves. Amen? The gospel of Jesus Christ, they are power. They are powerful. You just share. It's like we have a weapon, an automatic weapon, an AK-47 in our hands. It is not on the, on the user, but on the weapon. We have the weapon of God. Weapon that can change the whole world. A weapon of love. A weapon of the power of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So as he, let me just stress on that point. Our that did we made up our mind to share the gospel just now when we prayed? Did we make up our mind to share the gospel? Have we decided to share the gospel? Yes or no? Please raise your hands if you say yes. Yes. Thank you. One person can make a difference. You share the gospel to one person it will make a difference to his life and to many, many, many lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this truth that you've given us today, O God. Encouragement that you've encouraged us today, O God, to know the, the deep things, O God, in your gospel, O God, that there is hidden power in your gospel, O God, Power to change a person. Power, Lord, to transform life. Power to heal. Power, Lord, even Lord, to raise the dead from, to raise the dead to life for God. Lord Jesus, you've given us this power. It is in our hands. It is in our mouth. It's, it is in us, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that each one of us, O oh God, who have made a commitment today, O oh God, that we, oh God, we're going to share this power, oh God. That, Lord, I know, oh God, for it is a word that will change people's life. A word that will change the eternity, the eternal destiny, Lord. Not just here on earth, but, Lord, it will, it will change the eternal destiny of God. Lord, you have given us that privilege and that power of God, the responsibility of God, Lord, of sharing your good news of God, of what you've done on the cross of God for all humanity of God. You've given yourself of God you've, as a substitutionary death for everyone of God. That through your death of God, through your death, we will all be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you've given to us this mandate today, O oh God. You have given to us this mandate to share this power, to share this gospel. 
to share your good news, O God, that you came and died for us. And not just you died for us, but you rose again, victorious over death, victorious over sin, victorious over the devil. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the praise. And Lord, as we come, O God, to the end of this service, O God, we thank you, Lord, that you've spoken to each one of us, O God, even to those who are watching us in the YouTube, O God, we thank you, Lord, that you've touched them, O God, to be agents of change, O God, to be, Lord, carriers of your gospel, O God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we leave from this place, may the love of God, the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We will all.